Super Mayhem. Hello friends, Tim here again for another quick video game facts video. The Final Fantasy series is truly a classic. The game was first released back in 1987 on the old school Nintendo Entertainment System, and has since spawned many different games and is arguably one of the forefathers of modern RPGs. The franchise has even branched out into other forms of media, including CGI films, anime, manga, and even novels. However, I'm not that familiar with the series on the whole, other than the classic on the Sony PlayStation known as Final Fantasy VII, so to help me fill in the blanks, today my good friend Houdini Fontmeister, who is a wizard all things Final Fantasy, will be helping me out. So sit back, relax, and let's -a go as we explore some of the best and most interesting facts from the Final Fantasy series. According to Yoshinoru Katasi, when the series switched from 2D pixel graphics on Nintendo's platforms to 3D on the PlayStation, the developers made an intentional change in tone from medieval themes to a more modern, cyberpunkish style to emphasize the new technology. Back in the 90s, Disney was planning on doing a four-issue comic based off of the Final Fantasy series. Most of the cover work was done by Mike Mignola, creator of the Hellboy comics. Only two covers for the proposed comic were drawn. Kurt Buzik, who wrote the comic, explained a bit about working on the comic. I didn't actually pitch for the project. I was asked to write it by the editor, either because he liked my work or because I was in the same state as Square Offices or both. So I visited the offices. They loaned me a bunch of stuff. I played the game and wrote up an outline. It was after that that they told me they liked my outline, but they were working on a new iteration of the game, so could I retool the story to be about that? They sent me lots of references on the new game, and there was just no way to do it with the first outline with the characters from the new game. So they paid me a kill fee for my outline, and I started from scratch with the new story outline. The comic was quietly cancelled in 1993 when Disney's Hollywood comic studio closed its store. According to an interview with Hiroyuki Ito, many aspects of turn-based systems were inspired by professional sports. The design feature for characters to line up facing the opponent was inspired by the formation setups from American football, and the ATB gauge was inspired by Formula One racing. The recurring enemy, Coil, the giant leopard-like creature with very long whiskers, is named after and based on a similar alien creature from the short story Black Destroyer written by A.E. Van Vaught in 1939. The song Prelude, which is in every Final Fantasy game in some form, was made in five minutes. Nobuo Uematsu was asked to make one more song for the last minute, and Uematsu threw something together. He's still very embarrassed by it because it still appears in the Final Fantasy games. The song Prelude, from pretty much every game, the first game was practically done with Sakaguchi rushed in and asked for one more song. I threw together this arpeggio in like five minutes. I am still really embarrassed that something I threw together in five minutes has been used for everything. Character and logo designer Yoshitaka Amano originally worked for the anime company Tatsunoko Production, designing several of the well-known and popular characters such as Science Ninja Team Gachaman, Space Knight Tekaman, and Neo Human Kasern. The recurring summon Shiva is an inaccurate interpretation of the Hindu god of the same name. The summon is always shown to be a female ice monster, while the Hindu god is a male slash androgynous god who is associated with fire. Okay nerds, there are two recurring names for characters, Biggs and Wedge. These names come from Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, Biggs Darklighter and Wedge Intellis. It is thought that the reason these character names are included is because the director of several Final Fantasy games, Yoshinori Katasi, originally wanted to become a film director after watching Star Wars. Biggs and Wedge also show up in Chrono Trigger and Kingdom Hearts 2. In America, the name Final Fantasy 1 is correct. When Final Fantasy 2 and 3 came out, they were in fact Final Fantasy 4 and Final Fantasy 5, renamed 2 and 3. For some strange reason they skipped over Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3, and Final Fantasy 5. It was only when Final Fantasy 7 came out that the series naming was back in order. 
The recurring characters Gilgamesh and Enkidu are actually based off of the characters of the same name from the epic Gilgamesh, the world's oldest recorded literary work dating back to 2000 BC Samaria. Gilgamesh himself was named after the title character in the Great King of Uruk, a region in Samaria, who reigned around 2650 BC. Final Fantasy's Gilgamesh's bombastic warrior personality is mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh as the other gods hated his pompous godlike personality and his claims of being two-third god, one-third human. Gilgamesh's quest for Excalibur in Final Fantasy is similar to Gilgamesh's quest for immortality in the Sumerian Epic. Enkidu is also similar to his Sumerian counterpart. Enkidu's beast-like appearance in all of the Final Fantasy games he's in are reminiscent of his upbringing in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Enkidu was created as a wild beast man to match Gilgamesh's strength so he could kill him. The two became partners after the fight ended in a draw and they became best friends. This is similar to how their Final Fantasy counterparts are usually inseparable in their battle partners. In the original Final Fantasy for the NES, pressing A and B 55 times while on the ship will unlock a hidden sliding puzzle game. Also, the spells Saber and Temper do nothing in the NES version because of bad coding. In later releases, Saber increases the caster's attack by 16 and the caster's accuracy by 10, and Temper raises the attack of an ally by 14. In the English version of the game, just outside the city of Alfheim are three tombstones, one which reads, Here lies Erdrich, 837 to 866. Rest in peace. Erdrich is referenced a lot during the game Dragon Quest and is also the hero in Dragon Quest 3. In the original Japanese version of the game, the tombstone is actually a reference to Link from the Legend of Zelda series. In later remakes of the game, the reference has been changed back to Link. In Final Fantasy IX, a secret side quest was discovered 13 years after the game's release. It involves talking to the Nero brothers a multitude of times, while following specific boss battles and story triggers within the final dungeon. The only time this quest was ever outlined was in the Ultimania guide for the game, only released in Japan. There was no reference to the side quest in the notoriously poor Western strategy guide, or the Play Online hint website it frequently directed its readers to. According to the Chocobo's FF Laboratory, feature published in 5 Jump in 1993, Farrah Sherwiz for Final Fantasy V was originally a female gambler named Eva Sherwill. The developers encountered difficulties in making her fit in the game's world and atmosphere, and changed her into a pirate. In a later issue of 5 Jump, the developers noted Setzer in Final Fantasy VI evolved from this early Eva concept. X-Death's original Japanese name is Exudisu, or Exodus. This is worth noting as it would appear that X-Death made its appearances prior to the Dissidia. In Final Fantasy XII, there is an Esper called Exodus, both in the English and Japanese versions, that seems to resemble the knight form of X-Death. In Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, a totem called Exodus resembles X-Death's tree form. The reason the original Final Fantasy V was never released internationally was because, as translator Ted Woosley stated in a 1994 interview, it's just not accessible enough to the average gamer. Plans were made to release the game in 1995 as Final Fantasy Extreme, targeting it at the more experienced gamers who loved the complex character building. For unknown reasons, however, Final Fantasy Extreme never materialized. Final Fantasy VII heavily references the Lurian Kabbalah. Kabbalah is a Jewish school of thought that also refers to the mysticism of Judaism agnosticism, a collection of ancient religions. Not only does Final Fantasy VII draw from the beliefs of these religions, but it incorporates what actually happened to the followers in real life, as well as using Hebrew in the formation of the character names. A few examples are, the Gnostics were persecuted like the Setra, Sephiroth's name comes from the term Sephiroth, meaning counting or enumeration, which refers to the ten aspects of God in the Tree of Life. The sixth Sephra in the Tree of Life is beauty, known in Hebrew as Teferet. It is possible that this is how Tifa's name was derived. One of the advertisements for the game reads, Someone please get the guys who make cartridge games a cigarette and a blindfold. And good thing, if it were available on cartridge, it'd retail for around $1,200. This was a jab at Nintendo in their cartridge-based platform, the Nintendo 64. The meaning of Safer Sephiroth, the name of the final boss, not counting the unlosable battle that follows, has been the subject of many debates. 
Many assume it's a mistranslation of Seraph, Sephiroth, as Sephiroth's form bears an explicit resemblance to the six-winged Sephiroth angels, particularly depicted in the painting Stigmatization of St. Francis by Giotto. However, this is not true, as the Japanese name is romanized as Sefer Seferosu. The actual translation is Sefer, which is Hebrew for the word book. Sephiroth's name itself is based on the Hebrew word Sephiroth, which can be translated as numbers. The name Sefer Sephiroth can thus be translated as Book of Numbers, one of the books in the Hebrew Bible. And of course, we can't have a facts list without talking about Zack Fair, who was actually created late into development. He was made up along the way as Nojima was building up the mysteries surrounding Cloud. Most importantly, who he was and who he based his fake hockey personality on. Before Zack was created, Aerith was to see her first love in Cloud, though who that person would be was not yet decided until later. But there were plans to make this person Sephiroth. Eventually, Zack was placed to serve as both Aerith's first love and to solve the mysteries surrounding Cloud. When he was finally developed, Nojima asked the staff in charge of the event scenes to add foreshadowing to Cloud's true persona and to Zack himself. Zack was also the last character to be drawn by Tetsuya Nomura. And that's it for today's friends. I hope you enjoyed these 20 facts about the Final Fantasy series. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new, smash that thumbs up button, it really helps, and don't forget to leave a comment. And now I'll pass it over to Houdini to tell you a little more about his channel which you should be sure to subscribe to with a link in the description. Hello, my name is Houdini Fontmeister. If you enjoy me in this video, then please be sure to check my channel out. Like, subscribe, and comment, and share me for more content in the future. A huge thanks to Jacob Clark for being our first Mayhem supporter. Without the likes of him, I wouldn't be running. If you want to join Team Mayhem, please consider taking a look at our Patreon page in the description below. For your chance to get some exclusive behind the scene looks at Super Mayhem, and even access to some sweet, sweet downloads. If you want a bit more Final Fantasy in your life, why not check out this awesome 8-piece Final Fantasy weapon keyring set? Or even one of these 5-piece set of classic PVC collectible Final Fantasy figurines. Links to supermayhem.com in the description. And that's it for today friends, I'll catch you soon.